All right, and we are back. Now we are on uh, episode six here. We're going to be going over the structure of our entire project now. So we've kind of done some of the like introductory steps for OpenGL, getting our renderer together. You know, now we can actually render images. So now we have to actually like package everything together into a simple structure. And we're going to be using the EC design pattern. So uh, I'll just be going over that in this little paint project here. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. <laughs> uh, of course, I'm going to have to explain a little bit of it. But we're, it's going to be entities and components. And entities are just kind of like um, data objects that hold components as well as other, other entities inside of it. So as you can see here, it has like a map, hash map, or I think in my actual project, I use splay trees. And um, that holds like the children entities as well as the components, which it's going to be using. And components can be ranging anywhere from like a rigid body, if you're, if you're familiar with like a unity development or like um, like the position on the screen or, or perhaps even you know how we were dealing with in our code here if we go to like renderer we have like rect dest and rect source those would both be um, these two would both be components in our entity component system and uh, the general structure of how it's going to work, so we're going to start off in our main class like that, and um, that's going to hold an entity with which our game is going to be kind of held inside, so that is going to be uh, just kind of like an empty game object or an empty object in general, and inside of that empty object is going to have a bunch of different components which defines the game states that it's in. So that could be like the menu, the overworld for since we're doing an RPG in our game. It's going to be those two specifically. You know, maybe like you're going to a house or you have like different events that you want uh, to hold. Uh, those would be defined, definable in components. So entities in itself, they're not um, inheritable. So these are, there's like a, we'll put a, like a final tag here. Uh, if you're familiar with C++, that just means that we can't, um, like polymorphize the the class into something else, and uh, also in that game entity, it's going to have an, uh, an entity children called the current game state, and that's where uh, all of our like game objects. So if like if we're in the overworld, we'll have like a player uh, entity as well as maybe like a tile map, um, and then like a bunch of different like system files to make sure our game's running correctly. Uh, like updating animations, updating player position, uh, a bunch of different stuff. So those are all going to be components and entities that will be runnable in the game. So as you can see, it's a really simple design. That's kind of why the EC pattern is so uh, popular, especially in like game design. Um, and uh, we're, we're just going to keep things as simple as possible. Uh, this is this is in part due to the you know just C plus plus in general is kind of a tricky language to work with since you do have to deal with memory management. Um, so we'll be doing adding some tools so that we're, we're properly deleting things and we are when we're creating something it's making sure we're, we're deleting it. So um, having it in like a really simple uh, design like this it's really easy to keep track of. And um, so today we're, we're going to be we're going to be developing this, this entity class um, here. And uh, we'll be doing. We'll just be converting some of our other files into uh, components. So renderer is going to be a component. Shader will also be a component, and um, texture as well. Component material component. Um, the only thing that's not going to be a component. So we have like generic objects like Rex. These are kind of uh, used throughout different components. So we'll be utilizing the Rect. Um, uh, function or the rect class in uh, multiple different components so that's why it's, it's going to be outside of the component structure. Um, now with our entity component system there is it's going to be a lot of like kind of um, you know it's it's not going to be uh, let's see how do I say it it's uh, 
it's kind of like a, a complicated but like not very complicated sort of function. There's a lot of code that is uh, is pretty self-explanatory, I think. So I'm going to kind of insert, I'm gonna code some of the functions and go over what they're doing. Uh, but a lot of the stuff I'm just going to copy and paste from my notes and just kind of explain from there. So I, I uh, mentioned previously that this uh, right here, well, I, I, I just realized my camera is covering wrecked. I was talking about, um, let me go back. I was talking about this, this function here. Um, let me go ahead and remove my camera real quick. Let's see here. There we go. Um, yeah, so today we're going to be we're going over the entity. Uh, I said previously that uh, you can use any sort of like map function for uh, components and entity. Uh, I personally use splay trees uh, just because uh, I've done hash maps and I think hash maps are great and they're probably faster. I think um, they work in like 01 for like finding and re receiving components. But I found um, with, uh, you know, just through experience, I don't really generally uh, use a lot of the get components or get children functions. It, it kind of just runs itself as soon as you set it up on initial. So I think using like a splay tree where like it, it brings all the items that you want to the front. Um, I'm not sure if you're too familiar with the splay tree pattern, but it just, it's a tree pattern. And as you can see, entity is a tree uh, of sorts since it does have children involved with it. Um, it brings all of like the, the most necessary, the ones that you use, the, the entities and components you use to the front or to the top of the, uh, the tree and everything else that's not really used very often uh, to the bottom. And I find that to be just quicker in my mind, although I haven't done like much testing to, to, to prove my theory. Um, I'm just gonna just say that I've also I've also completed a splay tree in like college, so it it just seemed like a pretty good fit for me there. So I'm gonna go ahead and import the splay tree. So this is just copy and pasted from the Geeks for Geeks uh, site. I think if you just look up Geeks for Geeks splay tree, this will this exact code will pop up. So let's go ahead and just implement it here. I'm just gonna copy and paste it in because it's a lot of code. If you want to learn more about splay trees, I'd, I'd recommend just reading up about them. Um, just, but I mean, if, if anything, just think of them like a, a random hash map of sorts. It's not really uh, that important that you understand it fully. You just have to understand that it works and that it's probably pretty fast as well. So let me just go over this real quick. So this is a splay tree right here. It's a template, and uh, templates in C++, you can just put any sort of data object in it. Um, so we're gonna be putting entities and components as the template type name. So let me kind of get rid of that. I have it in namespace data structures. I don't really like that. I'm gonna remove that. I think I have too many namespaces uh, in my final project as is, so. Might as well clean that up. And I just have some like helpful like debug options like printing and um, going through all that. So pretty much all it does is it moves everything and rotates the tree so that every time you insert or um, search through the splay tree, uh, the, the most like recent item that you search is at the top. So it's the easiest to find. So if you're looking and like, um, checking to see if uh, the item that you're looking for um, and you use that item quite frequently it's going to appear at the top of your tree as opposed to like maybe on the bottom and that's going to be a bit slower in your code so that's why splay trees are pretty nice and it uses like all these like complex rotations left and right rotate and then the splay function here which is I don't know like hundreds of lines of, <laughs> of code <laughs> uh, all right so now that we have our splay tree in here, I, I would highly recommend just going to my GitHub and copying that. Uh, if you want to learn more, obviously I'll, I'll link in the description below. Um, Geeks for Geeks has a pretty good explanation of like what, how everything works. 
So let's go and after creating splay tree, let's create our, uh, let's actually create a new filter here. So let's go add a new filter and we're gonna call this filter ECS or actually just EC because we're not using the S. And inside of EC, we're going to create a new item and we're gonna call this entity.h. And inside of entity.h, we're going to, actually let's also create a new item. We're gonna call this component.h. We'll, we'll implement component first because it's a bit easier. And all component is, is it's going to be a class I component, so it's going to be an interface. And that's it. <laughs> it's going to be extremely bare bones. Uh, there's nothing inside of component at the moment, and there uh, we'll add a very, very little in the future. Um, but for now, this is this is just going to be what it is. And let's go to our entity include our component dot h. And component is left empty on purpose just because we want to, it's pretty much supposed to be as flexible as possible. So you can pretty much make anything a component. Um, that's kind of the idea. Um, obviously that's kind of dangerous. Uh, so we're gonna have some restrictions like later on to make sure that we're, you know, uh, not um, using datas or using components as like data objects as generics or something like that, or just like regular classes. So we'll like delete the, um, constructor and deconstructor, or not the deconstructor, we'll delete the, um, the constructor and then we'll delete the, well not, we're not, we're not gonna delete the constructor, sorry. We're gonna delete the operator equals and um, just making sure like you can't copy over a component over to uh, another different object. And that, that will just um, provide some like extra like safety net so that we're using our entity component um, in a proper way. Uh, obviously, you can just use it in the uh, the most rudimentary way. You know, you just kind of assume everything is a component. You can make data objects a component. Um, but in my mind, I like to organize things so that uh, they're they're kind of different uh, from each other. So the other stuff that we need to include, we'll need glad glad at h since we're using gl functions, and then we're going to need io stream just for logging. And let's go ahead and include splay tree. Again, we could we could use uh, unordered map, so we could include map and just do that. Um, if you don't want to learn about splay trees and you just don't really think um, you don't really care about performance or uh, really understand why I'm using them <laughs> in in general, that's totally fine. You don't really need to uh, include it. So here's here's kind of what I was talking about. So. If we're using like maps, it would be unordered map, or standard, unordered, unordered map. Oh, I guess you include unordered map. There we go. And inside of our hash map, we'll have two different values, It'll probably be like string and um, was it? No, we'll use like standard size int, size t as the ID, and then like component. So the i component components, and the same thing for the children. So this is what it would look like if you weren't using splay trees. Um, you could literally just um, use this instead of. Uh, uh, going over, just skipping over what I did with splay trees, but I'm going to be using splay trees just because that's what is used in my tutorial series and in my main function or my main. Um, and splay trees uses, uh, or the, are my implementation of splay trees uses uh, standard size t as the ID, like by default, so you don't have to define that. Oh, and this has to be entity, not component. All right, so let's get to the constructor. Pretty easy constructor here. Uh, we are just going to be 
using the default constructor for both uh, entity and children here. And then the deconstructor, also pretty simple. It will just be uh, clearing out, or we're going to be using the deconstructor for splay trees. Um, you don't actually have to define this. I don't know why I define it in my code. But I guess you're, you're making doubly sure <laughs> that things get deleted. So that's a good thing. We want to delete our stuff. So we don't want to be stuck with a bunch of, um, with a, what is it called? What's the C++ when you, yeah, it's like a, uh, you don't want memory that's just left outside and not deleted. Um, and not being used, as that can uh, directly impact performance for your game and uh, like much more. So, so we just have a bunch of get and uh, insert functions here. This is and then find. So this is kind of what I was getting at. It's like really uh, tedious stuff, but you kind of have to define this sort of stuff to um, get this sort of function working correctly. So get child, pretty simple. And we'll have position as well as, um, so we want to make this pretty flexible. So for our splay trees, we want to be able to insert our like functions as like an array. If we're just like not uh, wanting to um, like search for it later, or if we are trying to search for it later, we're, we're trying to search like as it's, as it is like an array as opposed to a splay tree. Um, and you could, you could actually have it so like, um, you could define like entity as like an array or a splay tree. Uh, this could be like a template, and you could um, template it out so it it it, um, it functions like a, a map, or you could template it out so it functions like a splay tree, or template it out like it functions like um, an array. And that might actually be a bit better than what we're doing here, but I think. Um, I don't know. I just defined it like this, so I'm not going to change it. <laughs> pretty, pretty self-explanatory. So how you use splay tree? So the first thing that we're going to be doing, so getting child. So the children. That's where all the child children are. Children are in the, or child is in in the children splay tree. And we just look for. We use the search function, and we return search at the position. And there you have it. I think I use standard size T here. Let me actually check. Let me check display tree. Yeah, I use size T for the key. So I'm gonna keep up that. I think I use GL functions in entity. I don't think I do that anymore. So we can actually delete uh, glad. Oh, excuse me. And then uh, the other way we want to uh, get our children, you know, get child, standard string. So if we want to just ID them, so we'll do it like this way. So SDR, and we'll just use the hash function. So string hash or standard hash, uh, children dots, dot search. And uh, we want size t, so we just do standard hash and standard string as the input. And then inside of this string, uh, we got to put that as well. We'll put str. I think that's how you define it. And I think this returns. Um, I think this returns a standard uh, size T, so we don't have to like cast anything or that. We won't get any warnings at all for that. The last thing is maybe we want to get the full array of children, so we also have a uh, standard vector of entity. Whoa! I guess we have to include vector. Looks like it was not included already. Go ahead and include vector here in standard array of vectors of entities. Actually spell too, that would be nice. And we'll just call this get child list. So that's the thing, we want this to, to interact as a hash map and an array, or 
you know, it's just kind of functions at both at both times, at all times. And then that is just going to return children dot get ordered list. Oh, I do not have that defined in my split tree. I thought I do. I should. Let me go to my display tree and figure out why that's not defined. Should be somewhere. Yeah, it's right there. Oh, sorry, I just bumped the mic. That was probably not very good. Get ordered list. Has no member. Yeah, that's just a freaking lie. It is defined right there. Uh, maybe there's uh, some... Is pre-order? Pre-order might just be absolutely bunked. I don't know what happened here. Is pre-order bunked? It doesn't look like it's bunked. I don't know why it's uh, it's doing that. Maybe we have to include some stuff here, like IO stream. Do we need to include vectors? Yeah, we probably should include vector too. IO stream and vector. Now does it yeah, it looks like it's working now. But I guess we don't need to include a vector here now. So we were just missing some includes. That's uh, that's fine. I do actually have those includes set up in my GitHub, so that's just on me for being uh, dumb or lazy. And uh, let's go ahead and just copy and paste this, and this is just going to be component instead of children. In fact, I'm just going to copy. I'm just going to copy the functions here. And I, I spell all my freaking things just differently every time I code. I don't know why I do this uh, to myself. Just not very smart. Um, one thing about components is that the component is a uh, what should I call it? It's a um, it's an interface. So we want to actually be able to like cast and get different types of components. So we'll be using template functions for our get functions to cast our components and return those casted components uh, thusly. So we'll use template type name t, get component at position, and then the same thing except with standard string, str, and then we'll just copy and paste what we were doing here for our hash function. That looks fine, that looks fine. And then now we just need to do our add functions. So I think we've done all of our get functions. I guess we have to do our has. So if it has a component, just go ahead, copy, paste that. And then has child. Also pretty self-explanatory. And let's go ahead and find. I guess we have to do has child at position and string. Oh, that's right. Uh, this is the wrong thing here. Let me just copy and paste what we did. Or has, has child. 
so I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to code this. I don't want to code this because it's just tedious, and I've already done it multiple times. Let's see here. I only have one has child in this version. I know I I added more because I needed more later. Run that string. Let's do standard size t for the ID. I think I I do change it to ID too instead of position later. It's pretty interesting uh, looking back at this now. Get child. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I just use those functions. That makes sense. Um, and then the same thing for has component. Except we got to put uh, type names instead. So let's just copy this. Instead of has child, it's or instead of get component, it's has component. And then this is. get component t with str and then has get component with position same deal oh whoops this should be a pool pool get component set of position Yeah, I ran into an issue too. I think I was using ints before. I changed it to size t later because I kept running into errors with that. Um, just uh, outside of bounds sort of stuff, nonsense like that. Get component at position. This is uh, get component t position. That looks fine. That looks fine. There we go. All right, so now we have our has functions implemented. Let's go ahead and do our add components, or add component and add child. And that is also pretty self-explanatory. Let's go ahead and do that here. So with our add component, it's going to be a bit of a complex one. So we're going to have a bunch of we're going to be using our type name dot 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 trgs. That pretty much just means you can add in as many arguments as you want uh, to our component. And we'll do standard size size t position and trgs. And then I don't use this get component type ID. I've never used it. I had it originally because I thought I was going to use it. And then um, yeah, it's it's. It's 100% useless. I never used it in my project. Well, I did use it for a bit, and then I, I promptly deleted it. Uh, this this video is getting pretty long, but it's also just uh, this is like a pretty pretty basic, I think, sort of um, just like going over. I mean, we're not doing any cool game stuff, so I think this is this kind of video is pretty boring. So if you want to, you can just kind of like I feel like uh, for this type of video, you can kind of just like skip along. We'll just do like a longer video where we uh, add a bunch, a bunch of stuff together, and then get this running, and then um, we'll call it. See, so add component, add component. Let's see here, where is? Uh, let's just copy and paste this, and do instead of size t, we're going to do string, and then we got to do instead of position, we got to go. Get our hash function here. I probably have it copy and pasted on my clipboard somewhere. I should probably use that instead of manually doing it, but that's fine. Um, and then we have one more function, and that is just going to be a pushback function, so we don't actually care about the ID, so, or we do care, but it's just going to be um, whatever the size of the our, our, our display tree is, or our map. So 
let's go ahead and delete this and just put in our art instead of hash string we just input components dot size I think we should also probably define this as I'd add ID component. Or this is add component, R, or add ID component. Um, this is add position component. Just to um, differentiate the, these uh, sort of things so that uh, if we do have like an argument that starts off with a string or a position we're not um, we're not messing with our function or like our we're, we're making sure we're calling the right function here and not like um, screwing over ourselves I think on the gets it's pretty self-explanatory since you don't have to deal with t args or the arguments and um, using like the forward commands and whatnot And then we're just going to copy and paste these three except for children. So that is going to be fun here. And I hope you I hope you're enjoying this. I, this is kind of tedious stuff, but it's very necessary. I mean, you got to have you got to have structure to your code and you got to have, you know, these nasty get and set uh, class uh, functions to get things working properly. Uh, the next thing see here what we got get child I don't have an add child oh here it is I do now there it is so let's go ahead add child times three we'll do add add child that's going to be our string add position child and then push back child That is interesting. I don't. I don't know why I do it like this. Let me go actually fix this. So it's it's like what we did for our add position because the position string is first. And this is going to be standard size t position. We don't need our hash function here. We'll just input our position directly. And then here, oh, we spelled components wrong. This is children.size. I don't, is it a function? It is a function. Okay, I should probably do that properly. We don't want to pass a function through. We want to actually pass the value of that function. And I think I did everything else correctly, uh, though we'll find out soon enough if we ever do compile this, which hopefully will be soon. Oh, that's right. Um, I guess in our class, I also, we might as well add a virtual deconstructor just so um, everything is defaulting um, or deleting like uh, itself as the default. So I component here. Equals default. Nice. Look at that. All right. So we're done. Look at that. Um, we're done at least with the entity class. I think uh, we're just going to make some things a bit differently now. Or just mix and match some stuff so that it... Um, looks a bit better um, for one if you notice if we go to our main uh, one thing that we omitted in the last episode just for time was the fact that our source is still um, using like OpenGL dimensions 0 1 1 um, and using like the the float values we want to use these as absolute values just for readability's sake to do that we're going to edit some stuff in our render function and while we're editing stuff in our render function, we might as well uh, 
also make it a component. So we go to our renderer, make this include component here. And then public my component. So we can add it to an entity later. And then let's go ahead and edit our renderer.cpp. It's inaccessible. Right, so we probably don't have to override that too, huh? Why is this does not override? What did I declare component? Oh, I forgot to virtual this. There we go. That should um, that should make it all better. Or not? Oh, what's going on with that? That is interesting. We'll go ahead and let's see here. Let's. Let's just um, assume that everything is working fine. Curve materials in this initialized. I guess we'll fix that warning. Um, draw. Yes, yeah, so we're just going to uh, normalize our source to make it so it, it works correctly with the dimensions of our image. So to do that, uh, we're going to define our component here. Let's see, norm source equals source. Auto image width is equal to the mat texture dot width. Material. I should probably actually spell it out correctly. And then image height, material dot texture dot height. And this will just uh, we'll just divide everything by the image width and height, um, so that our norm source is correctly. Uh, so we can we can use like 64 or zero uh, coordinates uh, to to get the the actual image or the cut of the image that we want um, without having to do like some backwards some compatibility math or whatever. So to do that, this is image height. W divided by image width, height divided by image height. There we go. So now we've normalized our source. We're going to go ahead and replace source in our buffer here with norm source. Yeah, this episode is is not it's not fun. <laughs> we're just changing a lot of the uh, the stuff that we were doing before and prior in a prior episode. I don't know why um, this is still component declared is inaccessible. It should be public, right? I think I, I declared it as public component. So, oh, 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 this is, that was declared as private. I see, okay. Yeah, 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 no, that makes sense. Um, there we go, everything looks fine. I guess uh, a few things here. We should probably create some entities. So let's start doing that. And then I guess let's let's also make material a component. And then I'll in outside of the episode, I'll probably just put these into namespaces just for uh, easier accessibility. Um, but we just want to get stuff that's working so we can run it. So this is now 0, 0, 64, 64 now. Instead of 0, 0, 1, 1. That looks fine.
fine. That looks fine. Let's go ahead and create our game entity. So auto game equals new entity. Go ahead, include our entity file that we created. Cool, cool. And then we'll attach our renderer to our game. So game dot add ID component renderer. And then um, we'll just input this. And then we'll have auto and renderer is equal to that. So instead of defining our renderer like that, we're defining it like this. Cool. Oh, we have to add an ID here. So let's go ahead and make it call a renderer so we can actually uh, get it later. And then we got to dereference this because it's a pointer. Cool, cool, cool. And then I guess we also, let's make some game it, or we'll make some player and uh, Tile map entities. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is player e player. In fact, I'll call this e game. It's an entity game. And that is equal to new entity. Or we could even do, yeah, that's fine. New entity. And then inside of our player, we're going to e player auto. Grass mat equal to e player. Texture shader. Uh, add ID component. We'll just push back, actually. Push back. We'll, we'll check out our push back component, see if that's working correctly. And. Um, do I pass through uh, the material? I think it's just yeah, as a reference, so I'll have to do that here as well. So we use the same thing we did with renderer, auto end. Boom, look at that. And then the same thing, auto e tile map to a new entity. And this is, we're adding like a lot of extra code here for now. Um, this is just going to, in the future, once we move a lot of this stuff out, it's going to make things a lot easier for like um, retrieving and like figuring out like uh, what entities are, are currently um, uh, running in the game state and a uh, bunch of other stuff that, although right now it looks really, really dumb, <laughs> doesn't look great. Let's call that flash guy Matt. Uh, it will look a lot better in the future, so we're just future proofing our code for now. At least that's just kind of some copium that I'm telling myself about that. Who knows, maybe uh, maybe there's a better way to do this. I certainly do not know. So there we go. Material, texture, shader. And then let's just add these components or entities to the game. So e game, add child, add id child, sure player and then e player then e game add id uh, child tile map e tile map and that way once we terminate we can also just delete the game so I think game is just a new entity, right? So we can just delete it straight up. Delete game or e game. So everything else is unchanged, but we now um, are actually creating our entities on like heap and like using pointers and um, the new function as opposed to just creating everything in main and then just uh, assuming that uh, we're just going to be running everything in main. Uh, this will make it so we can actually pass things around and like uh, ID through them, like using get component. So I guess we could just do some some gets here. So auto instead of like defining it here, we could push back 
we could do a get. Eh, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. This video is at 45 minutes. Oh, shoot. Let's just run it and get rid of all their errors. Yep, here's a build error. I knew I was gonna, that was gonna happen. Get child already defined or declared. Get child is defined twice, sure. And I get child is defined twice as well there. Makes sense. Was I trying to do has child? No, I have has child. I already have adds. I don't know why. I, I just must have uh, declared it twice. Component base class is undefined. Yep, no, that makes sense. Forgot to add public. Root unidentified. Root is unidentified, you're correct. Sure. All right. I think that's it. Still undefined. Base class member undefined. Huh. I component base class undefined. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was trying to um, warn me about. All right. And we have our game running again. Look at that. So that took a lot longer to do absolutely nothing with our game. Um, it took a long time to get nothing done, but uh, this will make it so in the future our game is going to be a lot better, or it's going to be a lot cleaner, and uh, we can add more to it. So this, uh, this will definitely be helpful in the future for future proofing our game, making sure things run correctly, and uh, if we want to add stuff, we want to add like different renderers or like um, experiment with different things. We can just change out components rather than um, directly changing code, which is really nice. Uh, that's one of the uh, like key features of the Entity Component System. You can have multiple different versions of uh, components and code. So we'll be uh, once we do scaffolding and stuff, it's it, it'll it'll be a lot nicer. Um, anyhow, that's going to be that's going to do it for this episode. It's going to, it was a long one. Uh, let me know if you guys uh, like the longer content. You like the, I think for the, these boring ones, I think I have another pretty boring episode that's coming up. Uh, not this next one. I think the next one will we'll go back to actually making our screen move around and do stuff. Um, but uh, if you let me know what you think of these, uh, these, these long videos. Thank you so much, and uh, bye.